Hi, my name's Laura and I'm going to be running the session with you today. So hello again to everyone who participated in our previous sessions and welcome to those of you who are watching for the first time. It is great to have you with us. Now today's session is particularly suitable for people who are living with mild to moderate stage dementia and this can help with mobility, focus, attention and memory. So we'll be doing some exercises for the upper body to begin with. Then we'll have some puzzles based around food and a quiz about famous people to finish with. There's also going to be plenty of music throughout the session, so I do hope you enjoy it. Now, you might wish to sit in an upright chair for the exercise section and also to have a notepad and pen beside you if you'd like to write down any answers to puzzles as we go along. Now, the session can be used alone, but it might be beneficial for it also to be used with caregivers, friends or family members. So please do join us for this if you can. If you have any questions or require further information, you can type into the comments box below and we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. So if you've just joined us, today's session might be particularly suitable for people who are living with mild to moderate stage dementia. The session is also designed for caregivers and family members to participate in, but if it's not possible for you to be together just now because of the current circumstances, then you can watch the session separately and then perhaps talk about it together later. So again, the session will be broken down into three parts. We'll have some exercises for the upper body to begin, some puzzles about food and a famous person quiz at the end. Now you might wish to sit in an upright chair for the exercise part and also have a notepad and pen beside you to write down some answers as we go along. You can pause the video at any time and rewatch it as many times as you need or wish to. So let's get started. So let's try some exercises for our upper bodies, hands and arms. Now doing exercises can really help to keep us moving, help with making us feel good and more able to carry out our everyday tasks. So they can be really worthwhile to do. Now might be a good time to stop the video if you like to sit in a straight backed chair for this part. But don't worry if you can't, many of these exercises you can still do no matter what kind of chair you're sitting in. So we're going to begin by doing some exercises for our head and neck. We're going to look to one side first, then the other side, then up and then down. So let's try doing that a few times together. Okay, so if you place your hands on your lap. Okay, and first look to one side. Hold that for a few moments. Then bring your head right the way around to look over the other shoulder. Again, hold that for a few moments, back to centre, and then look up at the ceiling, hold that for a few moments, and then right the way down to the ground, bringing your chin to your chest. Hold that for a few seconds, and then right back up to centre again. Let's do that another couple of times, okay? So look to one side, Right the way round to the other side, moving your head slowly round. Hold that. And back to centre again. Then looking up. Up at the ceiling. And then right the way down to the ground, bringing your chin to your chest. And then up to centre again. One more time. So one side. Right the way round to the other side into the middle, looking up, and then right the way down to the ground again, and then back to centre. Lovely, okay. So let's do a few for our hands and fingers now to keep our fingers nice and supple. So if you bring both hands in front of you and have your hands in closed fists, okay, and then stretch your fingers right out as far as they'll go. Give them a good stretch. Then back into closed fists again. Then stretching your fingers right out. That's it, just hold it for a few moments. Then back to closed fists. And then right out again one more time. Lovely, just really feel that stretch. And back to closed fists again. Very nice, okay, so now we're going to do a few exercises for our shoulders. So first of all, bring your shoulders right the way up to your ears with your arms hanging loosely by your side. And then relax them back down again. 
Okay, so breathe in as you lift your shoulders up. And then as you relax your shoulders, breathe out. Okay, let's do that another couple of times. So shoulders right up to our ears. Hold that for a few moments and then relax and breathe out. One more time, up to our ears and then relax. Lovely. Now we're going to do a few shoulder rolls now. So I'm going to sit sideways so you can see more clearly what I'm doing, okay? So first of all, we're going to start by rolling our shoulders backwards. So again, if you lift your shoulders up to your ears and then roll your shoulders right the way back and round until they're in a relaxed position. Again, your arms hang loosely by your side. So bring your shoulders up and back and down again. Let's do that another couple of times, okay? So bring both shoulders right up to your ears, roll them right the way back and down. And one more time, up to your ears, back and down. Lovely. Now we're going to do a few shoulder rolls in the opposite direction now. So we're going to bring them forwards this time. So begin by pushing your shoulders back and up, forwards and down. Okay, let's try that again. So bring your shoulders back, up, forwards and down. Back up, forwards and down, one more time, back, then up and forwards, lovely, and just let them hang loosely by your side for a few seconds. Okay, so things should be feeling a bit looser now around your shoulders. Okay, so now we're going to finish with a really big stretch. This exercise is really good for our coordination as well as for our shoulders, arms and hands. So we're going to begin by putting both our hands on our shoulders, one on each side. And then we're going to put both hands on our head. Okay. And then we're going to stretch straight up in the air as high as we can go with our fingers stretched as well. And hold that for as long as it's comfortable for you. Then bring your hands back to your head. And then your shoulders and then relax them by your sides or on your lap, whichever is the most comfortable for you. Let's try that another couple of times, okay? So hands on both shoulders, then your hands on your head, and then stretching right up as far as you can go, your fingers stretched as well. Hold that for as long as you're comfortable with. And then bring your hands back to your head, shoulders, and then down. Let's do that one more time. So bring both hands to your shoulders, okay, then both hands to your head and then stretching right up as far as you can go and then back down again. So hands to your head, then your shoulders and back down. So I hope that's helped loosen up your hands and your fingers. I can really feel the benefits of doing these stretches. So after all that moving around, let's take a few minutes to relax and just think about our breathing and the different sounds and things we can see in this short film about nature. You'll hear some beautiful sounds here and some beautiful images to go along with it. So I hope you enjoy relaxing after all that moving around.
Thank you for joining me today for these exercises and relaxation. So now we're going to have a think about some foods from around the world. This could help with our language skills in terms of naming things and also with stimulating some memories. So now might be a good time to pause the video and get a notepad and pen if you'd like to write down some of the answers as we go along. Do you have a favourite food or a type of food that you really like? Or are there some foods that you really don't like? What about this vegetable? The humble potato. Now, the potato is considered to be one of the most important foods in the world. Only corn, wheat and rice are considered to be more important as a food staple. The potato was thought to have come from Peru in South America thousands of years ago and is now extremely popular in Europe. Now, more potatoes are produced per person in Europe than anywhere else in the world. They're easy to grow, they don't need huge amounts of fertilisers or additives to make that happen. So how many different ways can you think of of preparing potatoes? Have a look at this short film and see how many you can spot. Will it be chips or jacket spuds? Will it be salad or frozen peas? Will it be mushrooms, fried onion rings? You'll have to wait and see. So how many did you get? Well, we had roast potatoes, which are nice with a Sunday roast, mashed potatoes, boiled, baked. All this talk is making me feel as if I can actually smell them cooking. Now we have potatoes gratin, a French dish cooked with cheese and eggs and it's really rich and delicious. Crisps, hash browns which are great with breakfast, potato croquettes also from France, potato salad and of course chips at the end. Now fish and chips with lots of salt and vinegar is one of my favourite foods. Did we miss out any of your favourites? Well the potato is eaten a lot in Great Britain but many countries have certain types of food that they are famous for. Let's have a look at different foods from around the world and see if we can identify which country each food comes from.
How did you get on? So fish and chips, as we know them, with the fish deep fried in batter, originally come from England. They're made lots of different types of pasta, which of course come from Italy and can be served in many different ways, including lasagna and spaghetti bolognese. And they're made lots of lovely chocolate from Belgium. Now Belgium is one of the biggest producers of chocolate in the world and exports over 400,000 tonnes of it every single year. Then we had haggis, a favourite of mine from Scotland. Now haggis is usually eaten with neeps and tatties, particularly on the 25th of January to celebrate the life of Robert Burns. Now it's not to everyone's taste, but I really love it. It's so spicy. Then we had sushi from Japan, made from rice and often served with seafood and vegetables. Now making sushi is a real art that can take years to perfect. Then finally, we had lots of beautiful curries from India, with the range of spices used differing depending on which region of the country they come from. So they could contain cumin and coriander and all these really lovely warming spices. I feel quite hungry now after all this talking about food. I hope that you enjoyed thinking about some foods from around the world with me. Now we're going to have a Who Am I quiz based around some famous people. So how would you describe yourself to someone who doesn't know you? I might describe myself as being most obviously a Scottish woman. I come from Edinburgh and I love music. And I've also spent most of my working life working in healthcare. So to describe yourself to somebody else, you might tell them where you come from, how long you've lived there, and any times in your life that really stand out for you. So there might be some achievements, like having a family or a job that you're really proud of. I wonder how you would describe yourself to somebody else. Let's see if we can identify some famous people by facts that are known about them. So this first person was born on the 23rd of April, nearly 500 years ago, back in 1564. He was born in the English town of Stratford-upon-Avon and he's most famous for being a writer and having written at least 39 plays, over 150 sonnets and two long poems. He's often known as the Bard. So who do you think this person is? Well, the answer is William Shakespeare and lines from Shakespeare's work are apparently the most quoted in the world after the Bible. And many of Shakespeare's quotes are still used frequently in our conversations today. So let's see if we can complete some of these well-known sayings from Shakespeare's work. So for example, the first one here is, to be or not to be. This is from the play Hamlet. So what's the rest of this saying? To be or not to be? That is the question. Did you know it? What about this next one? Romeo, Romeo. This is from the play Romeo and Juliet. What do you think comes next? Well, it's Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? This famous line from the play about a young couple in love from warring families. Okay, so let's try another one. All that glitters. Now this is from The Merchant of Venice and I remember studying this one at school. What do you think? All that glitters is not gold. And this means that not everything that looks great actually turns out to be so. And I'm sure that we've all had that experience. Okay, so let's try another one. If music be the food of love. This is from the play Twelfth Night. If music be the food of love, play on. So the speaker in this play is in love, but his feelings are not returned. So as he's heard that music is the food of love, he wants the band to keep on playing until he loses his appetite for it. Okay, so finally, friends, Romans, countrymen. From the play Julius Caesar, friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. So how many of these did you know? It's amazing how many of Shakespeare's lines we still use today in our conversations. Okay, so let's try another famous person. This person was born Francis Ethel Gunn in this month on the 10th of June in 1922. She was an American actress, singer and dancer and had her first film contract when she was only 13 years old. Now, some of her famous films include For Me and My Gal and Meet Me in St. Louis. But perhaps her most famous role was in the 1939 musical film The Wizard of Oz. Do you know? 
let's have a musical clue. This is one of the songs from that film that is always associated with her and do sing along if you'd like to. chimney tops that's where you'll find me did you get it who famously sang over the rainbow in the wizard of oz well it was judy garland and a film was made about her life last year in 2019 it was called judy and it starred rennie zellweger who won an oscar for her performance Okay, so let's go to our final question, and this time it's about a double act. So one of these people was born Arthur Stanley Jefferson in a town in Lancashire, England. He was born into a theatrical family back in 1890, and he worked at one point in his career as an understudy for Charlie Chaplin. Now he was part of a famous comedy duo with someone who was born in America and had the nickname Babe. They started working together back in 1927 and made 106 films together up till 1951. They had a famous theme tune known as the Cuckoo Song and we can hear a bit of it now, see if you recognise it. Now this duo also had a famous catchphrase which was, well here's another nice mess you've gotten me into. Did you get it? Well it was Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy, one of the most popular comedy double acts in early American cinema. And a film about their later years was released in 2018 starring Steve Coogan and it was nominated for many awards. So let's finish with a clip of them at their best in one of their most popular films, Way Out West, and they're singing the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. On a mountain in Virginia stands a lonesome pine. Just below is the cabin home of a little girl of mine. Her name is June, and very, very soon she'll belong to me. For I know she's waiting there for me neath that lone pine tree. In the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, on the trail of the lonesome pine, in the pale moonshine, a heart's entwined, where she carved her name, and I carved mine, or June, or June, just like, like the, the mountains of blue, like the pine, I am lonesome for you. In the Blue Ridge Mountains 
of Virginia, of Virginia, on the trail of the lonesome pine. In the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, on the trail of the lonesome pine. In the pale moonshine, our hearts entwine, where she carved her name and I carved mine. Oh, June, like the mountains, I'm blue like the pine. I am lonesome for you. In the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, on the trail of the lonesome pond. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip. Laurel and Hardy were on TV a lot when I was growing up and they still really make me smile. So I hope you enjoyed thinking about some of these famous people with me and seeing some of their most popular work. Thank you so much for joining us for today's session. I hope that you enjoyed taking part in it as much as I did presenting it to you today. So at Care Visions, it's really important to us to keep on improving and to find out how we can provide a better experience for all of you. We'd really appreciate it if you could please take a couple of minutes to provide some feedback through our feedback survey. And the link for this is in the comments box below. We'll be uploading new sessions on a regular basis, so please do keep checking our website to see the latest information. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We look forward to connecting with you again next time. Take care and stay safe.